please remain, remain up standing for prayers. Thank you. Good evening, councillors. Uh, I presume you all remember councillor Graham Fox, who passed away um, before the new year. And I'd like to just take a moment to hold silence for one minute. And then after that one minute silence, I'll pray. Shall we hold silence? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for Councillor Fox, for all his influence in so many different ways. Yet, Lord, we pray for the family, that, Lord, you would comfort and console them. And gracious Lord, as we consider our nation struggling with the recent storms, we pray equally for those in distress, for lives and businesses devastated, that, Lord, you would bring comfort. Lord, for ourselves, as we gather here this evening, help us to set our minds on those things in our own communities. Father, we thank you that you have given us that privilege of actually making a difference for you, making a difference in our communities. So lead us this evening in all our deliberations and our decisions. Guide us by your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you, members. Please be seated. <coughs> Councillor Steptoe. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. I'd just like to say a few words about uh, Councillor Graham Fox, whose name is on the right-hand board there, right at the very top, I notice. Uh, I'm sorry to hear of the death of the former District Councillor Graham Fox on Boxing Day at the age of 56, following a long battle with cancer. Graham was a local councillor who lived in Great Wakering for most of his life, only moving away to Cornwall in recent years. He represented the residents of Great Wakering West Ward, as it was then, as a member of the District Council between 1991 and 2002. Graham was one of the Rochford District Council's youngest chairmen, serving as chairman of the council in 1998 to 1999, when he was only 35 years old. Our thoughts are with his wife and also his daughters, Katie and Lucy, who still live locally. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Steptoe. Councillor Cutmore would also like to say a few words. Chairman, uh, through you, uh, I worked with uh, Councillor Fox when I was first elected. I remember him as chairman here. He was also leader of the Labour group. And I remember some very lively discussions across this chamber uh, when there were roughly thirds, if you like, uh, party-wise within the chamber. Uh, and I didn't know he was ill, um, which is a great shame because he was, he was a nice man and uh, I shall miss him greatly because we, we were, even though we were on opposite sides, we were friends. Uh, and it's sad that he's, he's left us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cutmore. Uh, members, a warm welcome to you all and a warm welcome to the officers of the council as well on this, the full council meeting on the 11th of February 2020. I shall take item one on the agenda Apologies for absence. Chairman, thank you. Apologies have been received in the office from Councillor Burton, Councillor Mrs Butcher, Councillor Mrs Carter and Councillor Mill. 
Are there any other apologies, members? Councillor Mrs. June Lumley, please. Thank you. Okay. Any others, members? No, thank you. I shall then take item two on the agenda. Minutes of the meeting held on the 17th of December 2019. <coughs> Do members approve the minutes as a correct record of the meeting? Yes, thank you, members. Item three on the agenda, declarations of interest. Do members have any interests to declare? No, thank you very much. I shall now take item four on the agenda, the medium term financial strategy for 2020 to 21 and to 2024-25. Councillor Steptoe, leader of the council, will introduce this item. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> Firstly, I'd like to thank all of the officers for the work they've put into preparing this report. I'm sure that members will realise the amount of work and effort has had to go in to produce it. I'd like to refer members to the executive summary on page 4.2 of the report, item 4. This report sets out Rochford District Council's medium-term financial strategy, which provides a financial forecast over, the, over a rolling five-year time frame from 2020-21 to 2024-25. It is recommended that the residential 2021 gap is bridged and it, by an increase on the council tax that equates to £4.95 per week or per year, sorry, beg your pardon, per year. <laughs> I'm reading quicker than I can speak. Per year, or it's 10 pence per week, which I worked out is the same, but about the same price as a stick of lic licorice. On a band D property in 2021. I would like just to highlight the initi leader's initiative fund that is coming forward. It is proposed to create a new reserve fund of £50,000 to underpin pin core objectives and operations of the council, but which will give further flexibility for the leader to respond to community needs and react to any emerging issues during the, the year. Can I just refer members to a misprint on page 4.25? Item 11, it should read £50,000, not £50. Further details of the fund will be supplied to all members. The programme also does not include specific provision for any possible investment related to the findings of the current member working groups on carbon neutral by 2030 car parking and the CCTV. It is acknowledged that on completion in the year, consideration may need to be given to any of the required funding relating to these programmes, which will be brought back to this council for approval. Based on, the correction, based on the correction that I've mentioned, I fully endorse the report and move the recommendation on page 4.25, 4.26, item 17 to the members. Chairman, thank you for allowing me the time to, to present this report. And I'm sure that if members have any questions, the portfolio holder for finance or the 151 officer will do their best to answer. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Steptoe. Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, think, I believe what Councillor Steptoe said is good news, so I'll make no apologies for an amount of repetition in what I'm going to say. We have the title MTFS in front of us. It's rather a dull title, but we need to be clear this is about our 
budget for the next year. It's our plans for the next year. But obviously it's naive to just work one year in advance. So as Councillor Stepto outlined, we go beyond and into the future. And future gauging is not an exact science, so these are our best plans. The report in front of you consists of uh, 129 pages. The detail is very much considered. Many hours of deliberation have gone into it. But I'd also like to pass my thanks to Naomi and her team, along with the ADs and their teams who have provided the substantial backup to the figures that you see in front of you. But it is the leader's responsibility and mine for what's been presented in front of you. So, what is it? Well, essentially it is a balanced budget. It's a budget that reflects good management, good financial management, consideration of risks and opportunities. It has some forward thinking. And of course, it's good value for money. Page 4.2, section 4, has the highlights, and in particular, picks out the council tax. A modest rise, a fiver, not a month, but a year. A fiver for a year, worth repeating. Just around 10p a week. Some of the things that it provides for. The continued collection of our bins with recycling levels that are the highest in the country. Provision of housing support that's facilitated some of the lowest levels of homelessness anywhere. A grant allocation scheme that helps those in need and those that give up their own time to help others. And please uh, note that page 4.66 does have a correction to come. Our ongoing playground refurbishment scheme right across the district. And not to mention car parking. Of course, not to mention car parking, because yet again, there's no increase in charges. Within the various tables in the report, a particular figure is worth mention, and that's reserves. Sometimes there's criticism about the level of reserves that Council has. So Council holds, plans to hold 10% in reserve, which is exactly in line with the SIPFA recommendation. It's quite right to say that there are, are other funds, but they are specifically earmarked reserves to cover longer term financial planning, larger projects, items that are subject to fl fluctuations, and of course our council's <coughs> transformation. We've recognised the financial challenges that we face. Worth perhaps just reminding members that in uh, 2015-16, the revenue support grant paid to the council was 1.2 million. Today, that figure is zero. The, fig the figures on page 4.8 show a worst-case scenario of how funding could go. But it provides a background to the importance of our future planning, which we are doing. We do feel that we've listened to the residents in the preparation of this report. Our residents' engagement has raised points that this strategy addresses. Our recent peer review raised some points that we're giving ourselves the opportunity to answer with this proposal. I have focused on revenue in what I've said, but the report also covers capital as well in, in Section 9, gives detail of new and ongoing reserves, and does recognise the member working groups that are currently formed and that may report within the financial year and may or, or may not require action. I do recommend the 15 points to all members listed on page 4.25 and I'm now happy to pass on to Naomi Lucas to pick out some of the figures and technical detail. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Smith. Thank you. Um, yeah, as um, Councillor Smith and the leader have um, said, the council is legally obliged to set a balanced budget each year, um, and in order to do that, we must, must match our service expenditure against the available funding that we have. Uh, the proposed budget for the next financial year will enable the council to deliver against its business plan priorities, um, as are set out in the revised business plan for 2020-2023 which is separately on the agenda for tonight. The local government funding settlement has been rolled forward for another year, pending the publication of the comprehensive spending review 
and the outcomes of the business rates review and the fair funding consultations which are expected later in the year. Um, this has resulted in the council being given a reprieve from the £630,000 reduction in funding which was expected as a result of the negative RSG uh, or revenue support grant adjustment which was proposed for Rochford. Um, despite the relative stability in funding for the next year, there remains an expected decrease in our overall funding levels for the council in future years, which coupled with continued increases in demand for services and inflationary pressures, gives rise to a projected gap in the medium term of around 1.2 million by 2024-25. The overall pressures on the budget um, for the next financial year total just under £750,000 of which we've identified £250,000 of efficiency savings and income to offset that. This, after taking into account changes in funding, has resulted in a gap of £156,000, which is proposed, as has been set out, to um, be met through an increase in the council tax of 2.15%, which equates to 10p per week on a band D property. The proposed capital programme for the next financial year includes provision for routine expenditure on the council's core maintenance programme, as well as the second year of investment in playgrounds equipment as agreed in last year's budget. In addition, the programme also reflects the indicative costs of the asset delivery programme, which was set out in the outline business case, which was agreed by full council in February 2019. These costs will be subject to review and potential change as the final business case is brought forward and is expected to be presented to Council in, in March 2020. The report also sets out the proposed 2021 Capital and Treasury Management Strategy, which has been referred from Review Committee. And this sets out the parameters and indicators under which the capital programme work will be undertaken and the Council's cash balance is ma managed. As Councillor Smith said, the Council continues to maintain a general fund balance of around £1 million or 10% of its net revenue budget, which is held in order to provide a contingency for any unexpected or emergency costs that arise. In addition, the new Leaders Initiative Fund of £50,000 will give some further flexibility to respond to any emerging issues during the year. The Council's total level of reserves remains at the lower end of comparable local authorities and is not therefore considered to be excessive. Um, this is particularly the case given the level of financial uncertainty that the Council faces over the medium term. Uh, members might like to note in particular that there is a proposed drawdown of £1.2 million in relation to the pension reserve following the triannual revaluation. Re um, and this will be funded from monies which were specifically set aside for this purpose. Um, it is also proposed that the final year of New Homes bonus funding of just under half a million pounds is used to create a new reserve which will help pump prime the expected pipeline of transformation projects arising from the Connect programme over the next two years. Uh, finally, I'd just like to note a couple of corrections in the report um, which have already been alluded to. So firstly, the um, recommendation um, 11, um, which should read £50,000, um, and there's a missing zero on, on that recommendation. Um, secondly, as Councillor Smith alluded to on page 4.66 of Appendix 1, the um, budget for voluntary grants um, under the corporate policy and partnerships line has been erroneously shown as zero. This should be £25,000 as it has been in 1920 and will be in re reinstated um, via a drawdown from reserves for 2021. Um, so, uh, yeah, if anyone's got any questions, I'm happy to try and answer them. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Smith, uh, can you please confirm that you're seconding the motion uh, as as given by Councillor Steptoe. Thank you. Members, are there any questions? Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Chairman, I've got a, a, a couple of questions. Um, before I ask them, I'd like to make it clear that I do understand and I sympathise with the financial constraints the Council is currently undertaking. I also acknowledge the fact that a council tax rise that's been proposed is minimal. However, my concern is that is the council tax rise necessary and are we spending the money in the right place? And so therefore, Chairman, with your permission, I do have two questions. Happy to obviously ask the first question, but with your permission, if I could ask the second one afterwards, I'd be grateful. Of course. 
There's various mentions in the report about the freight house, and at uh, 9.7 that's referred to as the, as the preferred option. But preferred by whom? This programme is apparently in its infancy, no decisions have been made, and yet this is now a preferred option for the next 12 months. More importantly for me, Chairman, it lists in the capital expenditure that we are being asked to approve this evening £1,382,238 uh, for this, this programme. So therefore I need to ask, is this in addition to the money which has already been spent on the consultants? What is it for? And why is it nearly five times, nearly five times, the next highest amount of money which this council intends on spending on anything else in its budget? I note also, whilst I quote these figures, that there is not a single penny set aside for the new carbon neutrality motion which was passed by this council in 2019 and yet we've been asked to endorse 1.3 millions on something which we've not even had sight of yet. Thank you, Chairman. Could you answer that one? Um, thank you for your question. Yes. Um, the um, options around the asset delivery programme have been through a, um, a due diligence process and a governance proce process at Investment Board, um, which set out a number of options and did identify and agree um, the preferred option through the outline business case as being the relocation to the freight house. Um, that's not to say all other options have been discounted, but that work is obviously still ongoing, but that was agreed by Investment Board as the preferred option. Um, in relation to the monies that are built into the capital programme, there are best estimation at this stage of the year one capital spend required as agreed as the outline business case, but as I've referred to, um, it's prudent to make um, allowance for that um, expenditure in line with our best estimates, but they are still subject to review um, following the final business case. So at this moment, that's our best estimate of the capital expenditure will be required for the first year of the programme, but that, that is subject to change. And that's a slightly separate um, proposition to the um, sort of revenue budgets in terms of consultancy and advice we've been taking in order to get us to this stage. Chairman, so I'll just conf confirm, Naomi, so that's in addition to money that's already been spent. This is what we propose to spend for the next 12 months, is it? Um, it's, so it's capital expenditure associated with the build at, and the cash flows associated with the, with the programme. So it's not about the, um, yeah, the revenue costs of actually bringing the programme to fruition and the consultancy costs we've spent. So, yeah. Okay, yes. thank you. Happy with that? Chairman, um, thank you for the opportunity to ask the second question. Um, my question, the second question, is, is probably more directed towards the leader, actually. It's regarding recommendation 11. Um, this recommendation is for a new budget of up to £50,000 to be set aside for the leader to spend on projects. Um, I know he's alluded to it so, so far already, I should say. But what exactly is this for um, in a time when we're trying to achieve other projects, such as carbon neutrality, as an example? Um, I don't understand, and I need to try and understand, how we are going to be asking residents to put their hand in their pocket to pay more money, which I know some are prepared to do, if the money is going to be going into a pot that we don't really know what it's going for. I think residents will be happy to pay towards something where they're going to see an outcome, but at the moment we seem to be spending money in some very strange places, and I would be grateful to understand what that, is, that fund's actually for, please. Councillor Steptoe, would, would you like to answer that? Chairman, I'd like to refer to uh, refer to Naomi, who will probably give you a better explanation than I can. Thank you. Honest. Naomi. Uh, well, I, I, could I refer it to Councillor Smith? No. Okay, Councillor Smith. <laughs> um, the the funding for this particular initiative has come is being provided from current year underspend, so it's not new money. It's money that has been previously raised so so it, it, it's not something that's going to be funded from council tax for uh, the, the the coming year in terms of um, what it's for during during the course of the year there are various initiatives that come along there are various budgets that for whatever reason um, get close to being fully spent there are um, needs that we can't foresee and it's perhaps a little bit hard to admit, but sometimes the normal processes of the council are a little bit, uh, 
lumbering and time consuming to, to, to go through. So the leaders fund is ready, ready to hand reserves to further supplement initiatives, emerging needs or where budgets have uh, been spent within a year. And uh, as, as I mentioned a moment ago, it's not new money, it's money that's funded from current year, transferred into next. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chairman, and uh, thank you, Councillor Smith. What I would say is uh, twofold. First of all, if it's underspend money, why can't that be directed into something which would then prevent us from having to put up council tax this year? And secondly, uh, speaking as a member who sits on two working groups, one of which we've... Um, is the CCTV working group, uh, which those members present in that working group will know. Um, we've only met a couple of times, but very, very much at the forefront of what we've been talking about is money and whether or not we can financially justify um, what we're hoping to achieve. Money is the root of everything we're trying to do. And yet we seem to have £50,000 that we can put to one side as a contingency. And we're being asked for residents to pay more council tax. And, um, uh, Chairman, I'm struggling to to ratify them, my head. Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chairman. I've, I've lost the specific um, pay, page reference, but I, I did allude to the working groups that are, in, that are in place. Those working groups have not reported, and it would be wrong for us to allocate money for a uh, provision that has not been reported or, or not had a specific request. But there is a clear acknowledgement within the report that those committees are going to report in the year and that the council is will be prepared to look at whatever those reports may say but you cannot force foretell what those committees will report and it would be wrong to make us to make a financial provision for something that hasn't happened yet thank you but Councillor smith I'll, I'll, I'll try and find the specific uh, 9.6 on 4.17 it was specifically to address that point. I'll let you, you come back just the one more yeah. time. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Just, just, just finally, um, what I would like, what I'd say on that is that um, I do acknowledge the fact that the monies have not been put aside for those working groups because yes, they haven't reported. Um, have we therefore got money that if they were to report within the year, bearing in mind the motion for CCTV has been, we've been told we have to report back within nine months. Is that money there? I haven't seen it in the budgets. If we do happen to report back saying that we want it, because I can't see that it is. Councillor Smith. I feel that's a statement rather than a question, and I, 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 I'm, we, I believe we've answered the question within 9.6 as best we're able. But, uh, but it would be quite wrong to commit to say there is a, a commitment to money for something for, for a request that doesn't exist right now. Councillor Wilkinson, I think your question has been answered as best possible. Councillor Mr Hoy. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm not aware that we've always had to ask questions at this point. I think we can also make a statement. Um, I may also ask a question within the statement. We shall see. It's an interesting day. I've been reading a few Twitter reports today, and it's obviously Budget Day for lots of councils. Um, and I assume, I think there's one at Essex, so... I expect some of our councillors are quite tired from that. Um, I, I'll start with the medium term financial strategy. I was going to say statement. Um, again, it's a budget for a year, and that's what we are approving the budget for a year. We never approve a medium, an MTFS. Um, however, the, the MTFS, yet again, is quite sparse in its detail. It's really the current year and a, a few projections. And I understand that, yes, it, is, it can be problematic forecasting five years ahead, but it, it, we should be able to forecast five years ahead to some degree and have ideas what we might be doing to bridge a budget gap beyond what we have in here with a bit more detail for year on year. So I'm quite disappointed with that. If I move to the actual budget for the year, I was um, just looking at the... Um, change on the previous year and I find it that quite interesting the original budget for 1920 was 9.293 million um, the proposed budget for 2021 
is 9.792 million. I think that's interesting. That's a 499,000 increase in our proposed spend for the year. And I thought we were supposed to be cutting. So it seems like we've had to cut. But then you look at page 4.13, the table at the top, you'll see, yes, the original budget was 9.293 million. But we've actually managed to spend 9.924 million. Um, so I'm wondering where the £50,000 underspend came from if we've actually spent £631,000 more than our original budget. It is surprising. Um, with regard to the increase in the band D equivalent council tax, yes, it is 2.15%. Yes, that, you, that might be considered low. However, it is the maximum we can increase it by without going to a referendum. Um, and again, when you look at the, the table on 4.13, you'll see that we are contributing £567,000 into reserves. So the, the budget increase is actually increasing reserves. It's not going to pay for services. Um, I'm aware there's some figures within there which are, are to do with the new homes bonus, but still, even if you discount the new homes bonus, we are contributing part of that increase to reserves, which I believe is wrong, which is why I cannot support the increase on that basis. Um, beyond that, I haven't very much to say on the, the budget. The, the £50,000 leaders fund, I, I don't really think it's appropriate that we should be voting to approve that when we're going to be given the details afterwards. I would much have pref preferred the details on the £50,000 before tonight so we could have actually voted on it with some knowledge of what it's for and how it's going to be spent and how the authority to spend it or to move the funds is given. Thank you. Councillor Mrs Mason. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I'm going to talk s slightly differently regarding the budget to the previous speakers. Um, one of the things that I was interested to hear Councillor Smith say was that he had listened to residents. And we have pages 414, 415, residents' engagement. I think we should be, all be concerned at the level of residents' engagement. We have over 87,000 residents and over 66,000 electors. Yet in 2018, the council received 136 responses. In only four of the then nine categories offered were those that responded more satisfied than dissatisfied. Despite this poor level of response, similar methods of public engagement were then used in 2019, with a slightly increased response of 160. This year, despite the additional use of paying for social media, advertising, the level of response has increased to a mere 222. Of the eight service areas in the questionnaire, 50% were more satisfied than dissatisfied. And of course, the reverse is true. 50% were more dissatisfied than satisfied. With an increasing population, one would have anticipated a more meaningful increase in responses than achieved through any increase is welcome. The argument could be raised that most people are satisfied, so they do not respond. Again, the reverse could be argued. We could debate with equal merit that most residents are dissatisfied and disengaged and are very doubtful that their views will be considered and that they do not consider the survey worthy of their time. Whilst the comments that we have achieved are welcomed, I would trust that in view of the disappointingly low level of responses, that these are not given an inappropriate level of weighting, which they may or may not, depending on your point of view, appear to have happened. However, the level of public engagement is just naught. 0.2%, which is woefully low and does not provide a meaningful result. I therefore would propose that a working group be set up with representatives from across the council's political spectrum 
to investigate methods of public engagement with a view to achieving a much higher and therefore more representative result for future years. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Sorry, I'm thickening that. Uh, sorry, <coughs> yes, Councillor, I was just about to concern. Uh, Councillor Mrs. Mason, you're moving that as a motion in addition to the recommendations? Yes. Thank you. Yes, that was the yes. proposal or a motion, if you so like. Okay. Yes, thank you. And, and it's seconded by Councillor Dan. Councillor Mrs. Hoy, you'd second that uh, amendment to the motion? Right. Um, we shall now debate the uh, amendment uh, to the uh, motion. Any questions? Councillor Mr Sperring. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think members will remember several years ago we had numerous uh, road shows for housing projects, housing developments. We also uh, spent, I believe the figure was about £13,000 to ensure that every property in the district received a letter explaining what our ideas were, proposals for housing, one thing or another. Sadly, the response was very similar to what we've subsequently seen. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Mr Steptoe. Chairman, just a couple of points that I'd like to make is that there is currently a survey going on for the CCTV, uh, and I believe the numbers on that are up in the 300s. But somebody will correct me if I'm wrong on that. 337 I've got in my mind. I don't know why. seems curious that... Uh, CCTV seems to be more important to people and their finances. So, mm -hmm. But that's their choice, of course. With regards to the argument as to whether no response <coughs> means they're satisfied or the other way around, I would just simply say that over the election that we've just recently had, that it appears that most of our population are very happy with the way Conservatives carry out their work. Thank you, Councillor Steptoe. Councillor Mr. Hoy. <coughs> Statistics are interesting. Um, I think the Conservatives may have got 44% of the vote in the general election, which means probably the majority didn't agree with them. But we'll leave that there because we can go on forever about statistics. Um, I think it's a good idea. Um, there's we've. Maybe not last year or the year before, but we've in previous meetings we've had discussions about um, the use of the, the the feedback we get from the consultation on the budget. Um, and I know we have looked at it briefly in review about three or four years ago. Um, I think a work a, a cross party working group would be a good way to go with this because of the the CCTV consultation is a very easy one to to. <coughs> to get people to react to, I think, in relation to a budget. And I think it's how social media is used. I know Councillor Newport has shared the CCTV one, for instance, on social media, um, and it's, it's going onto Facebook pages, and it's a much easier one to, to do. And I think if we have a working group to look at the use <coughs> of social media, the use of how we can get the people to respond to consultations or to make the consultations more interesting, I think that would be very useful. Thank you. Um, I now have uh, Councillor Hockway, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, in relation to uh, public engagement, which is uh, which is relates to the motion that is put before us, um, I can see that there's um, you know some uh, I think some uh, criticism about uh, how we might go about uh, public engagement, but just um, just as a a minor point: We uh, was involved in a uh, uh, <coughs> public engagement to do with the uh, the council's uh, local plan proposals uh, in my own village, and we had uh, probably twice as many people turn up to that engagement uh, out of one village than what as responses we've had to uh, council uh, overall budgetary policy uh, uh, this year. So I think it's about how. Uh, we can go about uh, uh, getting the public involved in this and I think the uh, 
have, if there's p councillors uh, from across the board who've got a number of ideas of how they can uh, help with this, I think this would be of benefit to the council as a whole. So I support the motion. Councillor, thank you, Councillor Hookaway. Councillor Connell. Thank you, Chair. Um, as pointed out by, by both sides, we, we could discuss whether people are satisfied or dissatisfied by not taking the survey. I can only provide input from um, from residents we speak to, specifically um, those uh, of my age, and I believe I raised this at the time with, with the council. The survey itself, on, on the first time it went out, um, had a set of answers that didn't match the question it was asking, and also had an image of um, the, the business plan instead of uh, text so when people were looking at this on a device they couldn't actually take part in the survey some of the comments we receive are that these are the type of things that make people feel like it's token and that their input isn't actually appreciated if the time and effort into the survey itself hasn't been thought through thank you thank you um, councillor Connell. any other questions on the amended motion members no Can Councillor Mrs Mason, could I ask you to repeat your amended motion, please? Thank you. I'll take the opportunity to come back as well and just saying that our new proposed business plan says to work closely with residents, communities, etc. We don't seem to be doing that at the moment and I'd like to see us do it in a positive way. So the motion I will repeat, I would propose a working group to be set up with representatives from across the council's political spectrum to investigate methods of public engagement with a view to achieving a higher and therefore more representative result on the residents' engagement for the budget for future years. Thank you, Councillor Mrs you. Mason. Members, you've all heard that uh, amendment. Uh, those in favour, please indicate. Those against? Any abstentions? That motion has been lost, members. Members, please, Chairman. Of course. There was a 15 for 18 against. Right, we'd Councillor Steptoe. Chairman, um, if I may, I, what I will do is I'll take the way the, the seed of the idea that has been suggested uh, that uh, we need to find a way of uh, actually improving things and see what we can do, talk to officers and what have you. Uh, I think that's something we'll, we'll work on with the portfolio holders and what have you, see, see whether there's anything we can do and perhaps come back and uh, report later, a later date on that. Thank you, Councillor Steptoe. We'll now continue to debate, to debate the original uh, motion as proposed by Councillor Steptoe and seconded by Councillor Smith. And Councillor Newport, you wish to speak on it? Thank you, Chairman. Um, so I've studied the, uh, well, I apologise, if I cover some points that have already been raised, um, that just goes to show how important they are. Um, I've studied the MTFS and have taken the opportunity to ask questions of officers about how the council balances the budget. We know that the councils across the UK have received funding cuts from central government despite austerity being over. But I'm afraid the same old line is wearing thin with our residents. As I've spent time looking through the MTFS, I'll touch on just a few items of expenditure that I could not understand in a time when we're meant to be making cutbacks, making savings. Rochford District Council has a policy that offers a staff bonus for attendance. I always thought it was referred to as a salary. Assets that are supposed to generate the council revenue have poor accounting records. With this, I refer to the old house and Rayleigh windmill, 
where there are no where no officer time is accounted for in the budget to operate and maintain these facilities how do you determine the real value of these assets and that's financial assets one thing that has already been spoken about many times um, and that's the budget provision for CCTV and the carbon neutral by 2030 working group findings personally I would have thought budgets are allocated in advance if the funds are needed and then returned in the future this appears to me as there's no intention to actually carry out any work of these groups I do not think it's prudent financial management or financial planning is it acceptable practice to not plan if we know or expect there to be expenditure in the future the, moving on to the capital program the capital program of this council seeks to provide the council with transparency over its future spending plans and to enable effective planning prioritization and financial management however part of this plan the asset strategy which other members have already mentioned provides very little transparency to our residents and particularly members of this council who are responsible for setting a budget for this coming mun municipal year with investment board meetings regularly cancelled members do not have a clear overview of how the asset strategy is developing and the future of many of the of the assets how can we support an asset strategy with this level of oversight which we understand may not be available to members until March will an amended mud budget be necessary it's not all bad though because I actually welcome the 658,000 pounds of investment in the enhancement of the play facilities over the three-year period but I would like to say that we should not forget the youth of the district who perhaps fall beyond the ages of those play facilities I've read the MTFS and I've all also surveyed residents myself via social media as this seems to be the accepted form of consultation I've spoken to I've spoken to rev residents and the overarching message to me was more work needs to be done within this council to become more efficient more transparent <coughs> and less wasteful on the basis of the capital program alone I will be unable to support the MTFS thank you councillor Newport councillor Stanley Thank you, Chairman. Um, there are a, f a few items that have just been spoken about. Um, and this budget isn't exactly what comes out of the Bank of England when they are not raising their rates or any anything like it. They still think that uh, we're in uh, dire straits and we should be saving money. Um, I'd like to point out that as been spoken, the residents are happy with, with a, a rate rise. Well, actually, if you've got your ear to the ground, you'll find out they're not. And I get that all the time. Um, and the basis is that I do think that it is now what has been voted on as the council of not taking that interest to the residents from their local ward councillors. And I find that very disturbing. I would have thought you, Chairman, would have done the exact opposite. However, the budget is, there are several discrepancies in the budget, some of which money could be saved, some of which money is being spent or supposed to have been spent for nothing, for absolute nothing. And I suggest that those officers that went through the budget should go through the budget again and see where they can save an awful lot more money, especially the 150,000 that is in difference. Um, this, I believe, you could find quite easy. Shall we say cemetery grass cutting? There's one for you that I've been told we no longer do that. Dog kennels. Have we got any? No, we haven't. So why are we putting money towards the dog kennels? That is for something for the officers who put this budget together to find out where they can save money. That's only two suggestions. I leave it with them and I cannot support this budget. Thank you, Councillor Stanley. Uh, Councillor Wharton. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the um, 
a suggestion that investment boards have been cancelled, changed because of any uh, failing on the part of the uh, asset strategy uh, to report on time, because I think that was the implication, uh, I strongly refute. Uh, I would like to uh, pay tribute to the enormous amount of work that has been carried out by officers across this council uh, and members uh, to bring everything about the asset strategy uh, on time uh, within the parameters that were uh, originally laid out. Uh, it was in December uh, that it was agreed at the investment board uh, that it would be go through the bidding process. Uh, it is a legal process that councils have to undertake when they're adopting a program like that. I will be reporting back uh, to council in March uh, and I really do want to put to bed any suggestion that any changes in investment board have been due to any uh, change in terms of uh, uh, the programme. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Wooden. Councillor Reeves, did you wish to speak? Thank you, Chair. As a member of the investment board, it's been quite interesting listening to some of the conversations here. There seems to be a bit of dual standards going on here. When we were talking about some of the working group proposals that are being discussed at the moment, i.e. CCTV, green issues and the likes, we can't put anything in the budget because nothing has been put forward. And yet, when it comes to the asset delivery programme, we can put figures in there, but the investment board haven't seen the figures. We haven't seen any of the uh, figures come back from any of the inquiries through to the builders. And so but we have got a specific sum that is actually being put into our budget that no one on the investment board has approved. I'd like an answer on that, please. Maybe Councillor Wooden could answer that for Councillor us. Councillor Wooden. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the process went through an outline business case. The outline business case set out in very uh, specific terms what the arrangements were and it was voted on at investment boards, executives and full council meetings. Um, this process actually started before uh, I was a councillor but of course I've taken it over uh, as portfolio, portfolio holder since September. Um, the, I think there may be a little confu of some confusion. Um, the amounts shown in the capital programme tonight are about phasing. Those were uh, produced figures within the outlined business case because what we need to accept within that program is that the rate at which we spend money may not tie up with the rate at which we get income from the sale of any of our assets. So it is simply a phasing issue. It is not a capital spend and we get nothing back. So I think that is hopefully answers the point that you're making. And if it doesn't, I'm happy to uh, take a supplementary. Councillor Eves, would you like to come back? Yes, it doesn't really answer my question because all of the figures that have been put forward to date, although we have agreed uh, an outline business case, I agree on that, they are all guesstimates. And we just, we have no, no figures. We, we, this is the biggest sum that is in our budget tonight and we are asked to approve the biggest sum based on guesstimates as to what we are actually uh, putting forward here. Councillor Wharton. I think it's a bit disingenuous to refer to them as guesstimates. Uh, this was a company that was brought in to advise the authority on an asset strategy. The figures that came forward uh, were um, the best estimates that could be made uh, in terms of prices, the costings and the prices that we would achieve on the side of the specific buildings that we were talking about. So to suggest they are guesstimates rather um, implies that figures were plucked out of the sky. They were uh, properly considered estimates, they were challenged in the various reports. But I think, um, Councillor Eves, you're rather confusing um, the fact that we are making a provision for an amount of money, agreed that it is a considerable amount of money, um, to carry out the plans when we actually have the final report from the bidders 
and we go through a due process um, to consider that uh, and what we're doing for this year is actually making provision to spend money at a different rate to the rate at which it will come in from the sale of the assets that we replace. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wharton. I'll let you come back one more time, Councillor Eves. The thing that I find rather disturbing about this is we're relying very, very heavily on selling the assets. There are some serious questions on actually the saleability of them. Now, we've had professional input on that. Yes, OK, fair enough. But the reality of the situation is that with those, some of those buildings, they're in such bad condition that actually the saleability may mean that the only way we can do that is to drop the prices. Now, the value is very different to what is the actual, in the end, sale price. That doesn't seem to be, we seem to be taking carte blanche, the, 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 the figures that are being put to us at the moment. We haven't, by admission from Councillor Wooden, we haven't had our, uh, our prices back from the contractors who have been approached. So we don't have confirmation on that yet. We haven't actually, at the investment board, seen detailed plans. So I'm not sure, quite sure, how we can be so certain on our spend. Maybe I'm wrong, but it is a point that is concerning me. Councillor Wooden, would you like to come back one last time, please? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I think the words carte blanche and guesstimates are a misuse of words. Um, there is nothing carte blanche, there's nothing about guesstimates. What it is, it's an outlined business case where you start projecting your thoughts and you have informed people to give you views on how you move a particular project through. These are not final figures, they are um, the thoughts, informed thoughts, of the consultants that we used. So um, if Councillor Reeves is getting slightly confused about the um, original estimates versus the final figures, can I reassure him, please, that the final figures will actually come back to this council to be approved by members? But please do not get confused by projections that were brought out of a, uh, uh, a consultant, a well-informed view, uh, compared with the final figures that will come back over the next month or two uh, to this authority uh, when we have the uh, the actual figures that we're working to. Hopefully that answers the question. Okay, thank you, Councillor Wooden. I'll, ask, uh, I'll allow one more question, and that's from Councillor Mr Hoy. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to come back on the, the asset programme again. Thank you, Councillor Wooden. You um, answered it very well at the end, I think, and I think you got to the point that we, uh, we as councillors, maybe not as involved as you, are, are saying we understand what provision is, and you've stated quite clearly that the provision has been put in for it and the actual cost may be different and this is what councillor wilkinson was saying about the 2030 program and the cctv fee program that why can't we put a provision in and then we can adjust it to the proper cost that was the only question we're doing i think we're getting bogged down in the specifics of the asset delivery program we're just trying to say there's a provision for that why couldn't we do a provision for this and i think that was the issue there thank you thank you councillor hoy uh, I think we've debated this enough now, uh, councillors, and I intend um, to take um, the recommendations. Um, I shall take them individually. These are the recommendations on 4.25 and 4.26 of the report. Um, recommendation one, members, is that agreed? Um, what, what are you asking for, councillor Hoy? Sorry. No, I'm not asking for a recorded vote. Can we, rather than say agree, can we have a, hand, a vote, please? Yeah. Okay. Um, in that case, can I have a show of hands, please, members, for uh, recommendation one? Those in favour? Those against? course. Any abstentions? That's carried then, members. Sorry? Mr Chairman, could we have the figures when a vote's yeah. taken? Could you give us the for, against and the abstention? 
Uh, the figures are 25 uh, for the recommendation, 8 against and 1 abstention. Thank you. Right, recommendation 2 then, members. Um, are those in favour, please indicate. Those against? Any abstentions? Recommendation three members. Are those in favour? Sorry, Mr Chairman, can we have the result of the votes as you take them, please, okay. rather than having to ask each time? Thank you. We go back to recommendation two, then the numbers. Chairman, it's 27 in favour, 5 against. There were abstentions, yes. Abstention votes again, please. Six and six abstentions. abstentions. Right, recommendation three members. Those in favour? I'm sorry, Mr Chairman, on a point of order, 27, 5 and 6 doesn't add up to the number of members present. Yeah, Ch Chairman, Sonia's going out some numbers because I'm struggling to hear. Okay. Chairman, we're getting the suggestion that at least one member has voted twice in that uh, vote. Right, there were 27 for and six abstentions. Okay. okay, does that add up? Okay. Right, where are we? Recommendation three now, are we? Right, I shall take recommendation three again, members. Those in favour? Keep your hands up, please. Those against? Any abstentions? Right. And the figures are? 25, 4, 8 against and 1 abstention. Thank you. Recommendation 4, please, members. Are those in, have we done? Recommendation 4, no. recommendation four. those in favour, please. Those against? Any abstentions? And the figures are? 25 for, one against, and eight abstentions. Thank you. Recommendation five members. Are those in favour? Those against? Mm -hmm. 
Any abstentions? And the figures are? 29 for, 2 against and 2 abstentions. Okay. Recommendation 6 members, those in favour? Those against? Any abstentions? The f Sorry. 34 4. Thank you. Right, item 7, members, will be a recorded vote. Councillor Mrs. Belton. Four. Councillor Canal. Abstain. Councillor Mr. Carter. Four. Councillor Catmore. Four. Councillor Dray. Four. Councillor Efty. Four. Councillor Reeves. Councillor Mrs. Gooding. Four. Councillor Hazelwood. Four. Councillor Hookway. Four. Councillor Mrs. Hoy. Four. Councillor Mr. Hoy. Four. Councillor Hudson. Four. Councillor Yuanu. Councillor Lucas Gill. Four. Councillor Mrs. Mason. Against. Councillor Mrs. McPherson. Four. Councillor Merrick. Four. Councillor Newport. Against. Councillor Mrs. Pavlin. Four. Councillor Mrs. Rowe. Four. Councillor Mrs. Shaw. Councillor Mr. Shaw. Four. Councillor Smith. Four. Councillor Sperring. Four. Councillor Stanley. Against. Councillor Stepto. Four. Councillor Ward. Four. Councillor Webb. Four. Councillor Mrs. Weston. Four. Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Williams. Four. Councillor Wilson. Against. Councillor Wooten. Members, there were 25 votes for, 7 against and 2 abstentions and therefore item 7 has been approved. Thank you, members. We go on to recommendation 8. Uh, those in favour, please, members. Those against? Any abstentions? Twenty-five four seven abstentions. Thank you. Recommendation nine members. Those in favour? Those against? Any abstentions?
Twenty-five, four, and nine abstentions. Thank you. Recommendation ten, members. Those four, please indicate. That one is unanimous, members. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, recommendation 11, members. Just to remind members that um, the figure in the report is incorrect. It should be £50,000 as opposed to £50. Um, those in favour, please indicate. Those against? Twenty-four ten. Thank you, members. Recommendation 12 is for noting. Is that noted, members? Noted. Thank you. As is recommendation 13, is that noted? noted. And again, in respect of uh, recommendation 14, is that noted, members? Noted. Thank you. And lastly, in respect to recommendation 15, is that m noted, members? Noted. Oh, my apologies, members. Um, uh, can we have a, a vote then, please, on that one? Recommendation 15. Those in favour? Those against? Any abstentions? And the numbers are? 24, 4, 2 against and 8 abstentions. Thank you, members. That concludes item number 4. Mr Chairman, if I may ask that now the officers have gone to the effort of recording the figures, can those figures please be put in the minutes? Thank you. Of course, yes. Well, I've agreed it now. Members, we will now take item five on the agenda, the Rochford District Council Business Plan 2020 to 2023. Councillor Steptoe, leader of the council, will introduce this report. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. It gives me great pleasure just to say a few words about the latest version of the Council's business plan. And like before, I'd like to thank the officers for all the time and work they've put in behind the scenes in preparing this. As I'm sure all members realise, these things don't happen overnight. There's an awful lot of work that happens to get there. The plan sets out a strategic direction of the council and the services we deliver for our residents. The latest version of the plan has been refreshed following consultation with members and staff and in addition was included in the recent budget survey so that residents were also able to submit their views. As a result of the consultation responses, the revised plan for approval this evening has been amended to make it clearer and simpler in the way it explains what the Council will do. Our priorities remain largely as before, early intervention, 
maximise our assets and enable communities are unchanged. However, the priority to be fi financially self-sufficient has been adjusted being financially to be being financially sustainable to reflect the uncertainty around the arrangements for future funding of local authorities. <coughs> as this is unclear, uh, sorry, as this is uns as this is uncertainly be becomes cl clearer, as this uncertainty becomes clearer, my teeth will work, through the comprehensive spending review and government de decisions regarding local government funding, then we renew the business plan in the same way that we review the MTFS to enable that they remain relevant. The second page of the plan sets out what we want to achieve by 2023 and there will be, some, be more detailed business plans with smart performance targets to support each item. I ask members to support the revised business plan and I'd like to move the recommendation on page 5.5, item 8.1, the council business plan for 2020 to 2023 be approved. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Steptoe. Councillor Rowe. Thank you, Chairman. I second that. Councillor Mrs um, Mason. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I'd just like to ask a couple of questions. I, I'm pleased to hear that the business plan will be reviewed because the other one, I don't, wasn't aware that it was, and that's a welcome change. Um, can I ask of what frequency and when? Because obviously we've got 20 to 23, so I would hope that it's not going to wait until 2023. And I'm also pleased to hear that we're going to have some targets and smart targets at that. So when will they be introduced, please? Thank you. Councillor Steptoe, would you like to come back on that? Thank you, Chairman. I'm going to refer to the Managing Director on that. Uh, ch Chairman, I think it's probably prudent to uh, look at the plan on an annual basis. I think that, that, makes, uh, that makes perfect sense. I mean, I think as the, as the various projects make uh, pro progression, um, then we'll look at the appropriate targets to apply to those. So, you know, there won't be a specific date, you know, when all targets will apply to the business plan. It will be as uh, each uh, component of the business plan make, makes progress. If sorry, can Councillor Stant. On that, please. Are the smart targets, sorry, I'm not going to, we, I think we all know what they are. But if we're having targets, let's have them. Let's not have them as and when. Let's have a date for the targets. I mean, I'm a great advocate of targets and I, and I like the smart ones. I, I'm, as and when, I don't think is acceptable. Thank you. Councillor Stanley. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I would like to know if we are going to get uh, uh, not only targets, but uh, how progress goes along, uh, not at the end of a year, but uh, during the course of a year, maybe quarterly or even uh, half yearly, if, if that is the way the business plan goes. Thank you. That's a good point. Qu quarterly is the, is, is the intention. and. That's something that uh, Naomi's, Naomi Lucas is looking at in terms of the, the, the review of performance. Councillor Wilson. Uh, thank you, Chairman. All of the, the aims in the business case are actually very laudable. Um, the problem that I've got is with the, the final page, which is about the outcomes. And normally the outcomes are the things that are different, things that are better in the future and can be measured. So my concern is that we should actually think about how we're going to measure this before we start the work, not retrofit the measurements afterwards. Um, and that's important because we need to see the linkages between the money that we spend on behalf of our residents and the services and the improvements <coughs> that they see. Um, and so I've got a final question, really, which is um, 
do we have the baseline data already to see whether we've actually improved this? So, for example, something like um, increase in the number of residents actively participating in healthier lifestyles. How do we know that we've made the difference? How can we measure that? We must have the data already. And that, that was a question I would like to ask. Thank you. Well, Chairman, I think, as I've already said, that's part of the uh, ongoing review that you know, Lucas will be carrying out. But I mean, I think it's a well-made point, and it clearly is important that we have appropriate baseline information against which to uh, measure out out outcomes. So that, that will be part of the ongoing work over the next wee while. I shall ask uh, no Naomi Lucas to say a few words. Oh. Hi. Um, yeah, just to add to that, the um, members should be aware that we do already report qu um, performance in information quarterly as part of the financial and performance monitoring reports which go to executive each quarter. Um, that does encompass um, a range of indicators which are um, nominally mapped to the current business plan, but um, I, I think we accept that um, yeah, a number of those indicators are quite historic and based on old um, key performance indicators, for example. So. Um, as as um, Sean has said, we are looking at smarter indicators which could be introduced for the new financial year which will map um, and correlate more closely to the revised business plan. Councillor Hoy, Mr Hoy, sorry. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I've been looking forward to the new business plan. I think the other one was very old and stale and, and, and appeared never to, be up, to have been updated, which it was supposed to have been. Um, I'll start off with the, um, um, Mr Scrutton saying that he thought this would be updated yearly. I would hope this is much more living document than that. I think when we, th we think back, this is, I'm pleased that some changes have been put into this from the first draft, because I also mentioned about the 2030 project and climate change should be included, which it wasn't on the original draft. I think if we are having a report to review committee um, in March, I believe it is, that that could, I think we would be foolish to wait for a year to feed the results of that review into this business plan when we could do it immediately. I think a, a business plan should be a living document. It, we should be able to take it. We shouldn't be frightened of changing it or putting better better things into it and, and changing it. If we surpass a target, we can put a better target in. So I think to, to, to do this just annually would be wrong. And I think we should really look at doing this much more frequently. And certainly when we get key reports coming back to the council on something like 2030, we should be feeding them into the document and changing it appropriately um, for that. Um, moving on to the targets, there's not a lot more to say. I just do want reassurance that we're not f fitting the targets to meet what we do. I, 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 we are doing the targets now and we're not waiting for a year to do the targets. I, I just want that reiterated. Um, and there is just one change I would like to propose. It's just one word which is on page 5.7, under early intervention. Most of these have been changed. Most of the, what we're trying to achieve have been improved for the better, and they are much firmer than they used to be, although lacking some figures, which has been raised by other people. However, I think the first one, con which I'll read it, continued, so we'll, we will have continued to work with partners and communities to ensure our most vulnerable residents feel supported to live well. I would like to propose we change the word feel to are. So they are supported to live well. I can't. I think that's a much better target to have, and I'd just like to propose that one amendment. Thank you, Chairman. Sean, would you like to answer that? Sean, would you like to answer that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. I, th I think. I think the 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 key challenge. Is is how to measure th that as as an outcome, um, but I, I I I don't I don't personally have um, too much. I, I I personally would accept that as a change, but yes, clearly it's down to council, uh, you know, to determine whether they would they would also wish to accept that. Council Councillor Steptoe. Chairman, if the, uh, the members are of a mind, I'm quite happy to uh, accept that very minor change within the uh, situation. Okay, I'm, I'm being shouted down, I'm afraid. I've got uh, Councillor Stanley first, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, 
Naomi Nokus mentioned that uh, you will be reporting to the executive on uh, the uh, what is proposed uh, on quarterly. Uh, I do hope it's to everybody and not just to the executive. Um, well, yeah, executive papers are in the public domain, so they're open to all members to, um, yeah, obviously um, consult on. And I, th I believe all members are invited now to attend executive meeting if they so wish. Got Wilkinson first. Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, Chairman, all I was going to say was I'm going to second uh, Councillor Hoy's um, proposal, which I don't think it's been done so so okay, far. I'll come back. I'll come back to that. Um, Councillor Efty. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm not going to say the word field, but with the feel, I think it's for the person to feel that they're being supported. If we're just supporting the person, it's us we're supporting them. I don't know if that is what was meant in the actual wording. So I think changing that word completely changes the whole concept of it because it's the person will feel supported, not that we are supporting them. Chairman, can I make a suggestion? Because I mean, I think I, th I think it's a, it's it's a it's a very good point. Are you are we measuring what people feel, or what how or how we're 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 performing? You know, so I, I, but, but why not why not why not why not do both? You know, I mean that that would be the sensible thing to to, to do in terms of the wording. Councillor Ward. Thank you, Chairman. I think it's important to understand the English language. Um, by 2023, we will have, it is future tense, so what we're speaking to here is residents felt supported to live well. I would support the term felt because you are future tense and it's how they would actually respond to it. So if we're actually going to be talking about residents going forward, we're talking of the future. This is actually speaking to the future. 2023 what we're saying basically is continue to work with partners and communities to ensure our most vulnerable residents felt supported to live well felt supported as opposed feel wrong tense members we have a proposal and a seconder uh, on the floor um, I propose to put that um, to the vote uh, councillor mr. Hoy can you s once again explain the exact change you require please chairman on comments i take on board councillor ward's comments about the use of the english language and i understand that he's also a comment on the word fill which was incorrectly used as well so i'm perfectly happy to to withdraw the motion i did and put a new motion which would state that the word should be residents have been have and feel and f have felt that they have been supported if you feel Do you so, have a second but I think it as was to be said I think it's a, a fairly minor point and I'm just trying to get a, something which I feel is measurable and people can comprehend into this thank you Councillor Mr Hoy do you have a, a seconder for that change Councillor Hockway Sorry, Councillor Hoy, can we just be clear on the wording? Have felt. Uh, I'm just going to, Councillor Hoy, I'm just going to read it. So the wording you, you're, the, moment, the amendment you're proposing is continue to work with the partners and communities to ensure our most vulnerable residents have felt supported to live well. Yes, it's, it's not the best wording I would have chosen. But so it's have yeah. felt supported. Okay. We need to vote. Those in favour of that change then, members? Please indicate. Are those against? Any abstentions? Is that an abstention, Councillor Hazelwood? Okay, um, that has been passed in, members. Thank you. Um, notwithstanding that, uh, members, there is one um, recommendation. I can find it. It is that the council's business plan 2020-2023 be approved. Is that approved, members? Agreed. Yes, as amended, of course, members. 
Thank you, members. That's the last item on the agenda, and that's the case I close the meeting at 8.58. Thank you very much. Members, please be upstanding for the chairman as he leaves the chamber. Whoa. <laughs> Careful. <laughs>